Welcome back. This is the second part of our exercise tutorial. We're going to create more custom control of the plate size and the rectangular pattern. Let's begin by making our sketch visible. Expand Extrusion 1, right click on Sketch 1 and select Visibility. Let's do the same for Extrusion 2. Now I'm going to rename the dimensions associated with the seed hole. Let's right click, select Dimension Display, Expression. As you can see in my graphic area, we've got dimensions D4, D5, and the diameter of the hole is D6. Let's go to the Parameters window. And let's rename D5. I will call it Seed Hole Distance, or DIST for short, 1. Now let's select and copy this parameter name, Control C, and let's paste it in D4, Control V, but change the ending to 2. D6, we will name Hole Diameter, and just click outside to register, and let's click Done. Now, one tip. When you've got a lot of parameters to rename, group them on the same side in your graphic area as you see that I've done here. Here I've got length 1, seed hole distance 1, direction 1, number of instances. When I mouse over the field, a callout displays the parameter name, dir1 number. And down below, we've got dir1 distance, or direction1 distance. Let's cancel out. What I want to say here, basically, length1, seed hole1, direction1, and distance1 are control parameters that are located on the same side of the plane, for a lack of a better way to describe this. In my particular model, it's not that critical since my plate is square with an equal number of holes in both directions. But there are situations where this matters. Things can get really confusing pretty quickly. For example, let's say you have direction one number, dir one number up here, which corresponds to direction two distance. At a glance, you want to be able to know what is partnered with what. And this is a small extra step to help prevent errors. Let's double click our rule to get into editing mode. Let's get rid of most of this code. And let's create a couple variables. The first will be var length, space equals space. Now let's expand the message box branch and bring in an input box. I'll delete this extra code here. In this input box, the user is going to input the plate dimension. So let's type an appropriate prompt. Please specify plate dimension. and then x by x. Let's make this a capital D. And copy plate dimension. Let's replace the title with plate dimension. For the default entry, we'll use length 1. Let's create a second variable. var dist space equals space, and here we'll use a second input box. And for the prompt, I'll type please specify the distance between holes. Let's change the title to distance between holes. Just copy and paste it. For the default value, let's use the direction 1 distance. Next, we need to create a variable for the number of holes.
I'll call it var num, space equals space. Now, in order to determine the number of holes, we need to divide the variable length by the variable distance. In this line, we're going to have some issue which won't necessarily give me a runtime error, but in any case, to demonstrate it, I will bring in a message box to help make it clear. We'll just change the title, test, and we'll display the value stored in all three variables in our message box. Var length, space equals space, open double quotation mark, space, ampersand, space, and let's paste var length, space, ampersand, space. Let's bring in the carriage return line feed constant, and let's break the line, another ampersand and space, a set of double quotation marks, and let's copy this variable name and paste it within those quotation marks. Space equals space, open double quote, space, ampersand, paste var dist, space, ampersand, and another carriage return line feed. Lastly, let's see what value is stored in variable var num. Let's control V. Now space equals space, space, ampersand, space, control V to paste var num. Lastly, let's replace the literals with variables and paste again. Next, the variable distance. And lastly, the number of holes. Let's run our program. Click OK. Here's our first message box. Please specify the plate dimension. Let's make it 100 by 100. Click OK. Next, the distance between holes. Let's make it 15 millimeters and click OK. Now, as you see, we've ended up with a fractional number as the number of holes. Let's click OK and learn how we can fix this problem in our code. Let me just add some spaces so the code's a little bit easier to interpret. Here I'm going to use the floor function. The floor function is a member of the math class. What it does is round a number down. Some other similar and useful math functions are ceiling. Let me just type them in here. And truncate. The difference between these three math class functions is this. The floor function rounds down. The ceiling function rounds up. Truncate will round towards zero. So if you've got a literal that's minus 4.5, the floor function will round down to minus 5. But truncate is going to give you minus 4. It'll round closer to zero. Let's comment out these two functions and run our code again. Let's click OK. And I'll accept the default value. Click OK. Click OK again. Now the number of holes is a whole number, 6. Let's click OK. So we have solved one problem, but there is another one here. Let's cut this part of the equation to make it more clear. I'm just going to recreate the problem. Basically, the issue is that var dist is a string, and the floor function doesn't work with a string. Let's click OK. Just accept our default values. OK. OK, and here is a runtime error. Basically, this function can't convert a string to a number automatically. Let's click OK. To solve this problem, I'm going to use the CDBL function. This function converts a string to a double. Let's run our program now. Click OK and see how it works. I'll accept the default values again. OK. OK. 
and no runtime error this time. Let's restore our formula. We've also got the potential for one more logical mistake here. Instead of using the CDBL function and the floor function, I'm going to use a convert to integer function. We're going to end up with a logical problem because sometimes the number will round up and sometimes it'll round down. In other words, 6.6 .6 will round up to 7 and 6.4 will round down to 6. OK. Let's click OK to run our code. We'll just accept the default values. And let's click OK and make another change. This time, I want to incorporate one more input box function. It'll be whole diameter. Double click on the input box function. Delete this extra code. Now let's replace prompt with please specify whole diameter. Let's copy whole diameter and we'll use that text for the title. Paste it here. The default entry will be whole diameter. Let's add a little bit more code. Copy and paste. Let's run our program again. Click OK. And we get error. Can you see where the problem is? I'll show you. It's right here. The ampersand symbol is missing. But notice that line 7 of the code was highlighted. However, my syntax error is actually in line 8. Looks OK now. Let's click OK to test it out again. Let's accept the default values just by clicking OK. Specify the whole diameter. Let's say 6 millimeters. And click OK. Last thing to do here, let's center the whole pattern on our plate. Let's open up the rule. And to do so, we need to add a little more code, a formula. Let's copy var length. Paste it here. Space, minus sign, space. Now let's copy var num. Right click and paste, and space minus one. Lastly here, var distance. Right click and copy, space, asterisk, space. That's the math operator for multiplication. And let's put all of this within parentheses and divide it by two. So what's this formula about? Well, I'm subtracting from the total length of the side of my plate the product of the distance between holes multiplied by the number of spaces. In other words, if I've got five holes, I have four spaces between the holes, and I divide the resulting number by two. Let's copy this line. Copy. And let's paste it here with a control V. This is for seed hole distance 2. Let's add these variables to my message box. Copy this portion of the code. And let's right click and copy. And paste it here. Again here. And paste here as well. Let's run our program again by clicking OK. The plate will be 100 by 100. Let's click OK. The distance between holes, 15. Let's click OK. And the diameter of the hole, let's say 8. Click OK. And here's a summary of our adjustments. For the end user, you'd make this box just a little more user-friendly. 
but we're going to move on at this point. Let's click OK. And this concludes our exercise.